Hello everyone, Cubase's Mix Console is an incredibly powerful and flexible mixing environment. With Cubase 10.5, we've taken this even further with the EQ and Spectral Curve comparison mode. This feature allows you to see the EQ and Spectral Curve of two separate channels superimposed on one EQ display, making it incredibly easy to check for sounds clashing with each other and sculpt your sound for cleaner and defined mixes. Whether you're mixing or producing, it's always a good idea that you make sure that all your instruments occupy a specific space in the frequency spectrum and you don't have instruments fighting with each other for the same frequencies. The spectral curve comparison mode in Cubase 10.5 can really help you with that. Let me show you how it works. Let's say we have this track right here. So first of all, let's say I want to take care of my low end on this track. And for this, of course, I want to focus on my kick drum and the electric bass. So in this case, I'm going to open the channel settings for my kick drum and I can play it. And maybe I want to check the relationship in terms of frequencies with my electric bass. So as you can see now in the EQ window, I can have my reference track, the track that I'm working on, and I can have the comparison channel. So in this case, I'm going to go and select my electric bass. So now let's play it and see what happens. So as you can see, I can see my kick drum with a blue spectral curve and my electric bass with the orange spectral curve. And I can immediately see the relationship between the two instruments. So in this case, I might want to basically make sure that the meat of my kick drum, the low end, is around 60 hertz from what I can see and the bass is around 90 hertz, 80 hertz, somewhere around that area. So now it's very clear what I have to do in terms of EQing. The other great thing is that I can immediately immediately focus on these instruments. So instead of listening to the entire arrangement, I can immediately go and solo the kick drum and the bass. So when you're mixing, this is incredibly useful because you're immediately focusing on the channels that you want to take care of. So in this case, I'm going to go and start with my kick drum first. Maybe I want to boost around 60 Hertz. Let's do this. And in order to leave some space for the bass, the fundamentals right there, I'm going to cut a little bit in the 80 to 90 hertz area. And from what I can see, this entire area is free. So right now I can just use my EQ to add a little bit of this click of this attack for my kick drum. So let's go here and add a little bit of click to this kick drum. Around 2K. Now I can immediately move on to my bass and start tweaking the EQ of the bass track. So all I need to do is just click on the electric bass and now I'm in the EQ settings for the bass. I don't even have to switch the channel on the mixer. I can just click on the channel right here and I go straight away to my comparison channel. So now let's start tweaking the bass. So straight away we need to leave some room for the kick drum. I'm going to reduce the 60 Hertz area. And now I'm going to enhance the fundamentals of the bass around 80 to 90 Hertz. and maybe add a little bit of mid-range. So as you can see, it's incredibly easy to make two instruments sit well in a mix just by using the spectral curve comparison mode. So now let's say I want to make sure that my electric bass and my Rhodes piano sound right there sit well as well. This is also a very tricky situation because they both occupy a lot of the low mid range. So now what I can do is I can go to my Rhodes and I can play it and I can compare it to my bass. And I can already see that there's a lot of low end rumble right there in the roads. So I can immediately clean it up with my filter right there. 
maybe I want to leave some space for the bass, so I'm going to get rid of the 80 hertz as well. And now I'm going to add some mid-range over here so I can have this warmth of the road sound. And of course you have some really useful settings when it comes to the spectral curve comparison mode. If we click on this cogwheel right here, we can find quite a few very useful settings. In this case, I can choose how my EQ controls look like. Maybe I want them as knobs or maybe as sliders. I can even completely hide the equalizer controls. I can also show the frequency analyzer before the EQ curve. And also I can hold the EQ curve post EQ. That's really, really important because I can immediately see I can visualize exactly how the frequency spectrum of each sound looks like because we asked Cubase to hold the peak curve. And of course, there are quite a few more controls. You can change the transparency of the reference channel and the comparison channel. So depending on what works for you, this is completely customizable to your liking. So whether you're mixing or producing, the new Spectral Curve Comparison Mode can help you get to the perfect mix quickly and easily.